told you I'd be back soon. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Welcome to the Earth Tones Girl channel. My name is Denise and this is episode number 77. Surprise! <laughs> I promised in the last episode that I would be back very soon and here I am. <sighs> the only way that you're going to make things happen is if you do things to make things happen. And that's what I'm doing here. So that said, <laughs> it's my little world advice for the or life advice for, to, for this episode. I am so excited and so happy to be back so soon. Thank you so much for the very, very heartwarming and amazing welcome back to the channel. It was just, I, I was so moved and I'm so grateful. Um, it was really, really wonderful reading your comments. I have gone through, I think almost all of them with the exception of a few that just came in the last day or so. Um, and I have picked a winner uh, in the last episode. If you did not see it, if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm very happy you're here. And in the last episode, I was doing a giveaway for that book right there. <laughs> and and I have picked a winner, um, but before I get into that, I also want to say welcome September. Today is September, I think it's back there, September 4th. It is Monday. Uh, happy Labor Day to those in the United States. Um, if you are celebrating, for us here in the States, it is the unofficial end of summer. A lot of schools and a lot of schools within states have already gone back to school. Um, for us here in New York, my children are going back to school this coming week. Uh, my daughter is in on Wednesday, my son is in on Thursday, and I am telling you now, I'm going to be messy. <laughs> I am very, very um, attached to my children. If you've been watching for a while, you know that. So it's, it's definitely going to be a school year of milestones. I will have a high school freshman, um, my son will be in fourth grade and I don't know, fourth grade suddenly sounds a lot older than third. I know it's one year, I know, I know, but, um, but it feels big. I don't know, he just even looks older and just, I trimmed his hair yesterday. I, I don't, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'll take my mommy hat off in one second and put on my making hat. Um, it's just, it's going to be a really great um, school year and and the start of a new adventure for them and for me so yeah but um September has arrived I it is it is as I said in the last episode it's my birthday month and um I am celebrating all month long maybe that's a little greedy but I don't care <laughs> and to the other September babies who told me um that their birthdays were also in September happy birthday to you whenever whatever your day is this month happy birthday I hope you do something fun for yourself um so yeah let's get to the winner that's enough babbling <laughs> let's get right to the winner <laughs> so just a, a tiny little bit of background about YouTube. Um, the last time YouTube did an update, usually when people comment, have commented and left comments in the past, I usually see a name. Um, Jane, Alan, Barbara, Joanne, Ellen, Elaine, whoever it is, I usually see a person's name. If not a full name, then a first name with an initial or just a first name, it doesn't matter. But lately, what it's been doing is just giving... Um, similar to a to a Instagram name it's sort of the little at symbol and then an email address so sometimes if the person's name is in the email address I will see their name and assume that's their name and other times um it may be the name of a, of a website that they have or of their own YouTube channel so I'm not always sure of names so the winner drum roll brrr, but that wasn't very good brrr, no still not good okay anyway <laughs> The winner is Wanda Styrisky. I really, I'm sorry if I'm messing up your last name. The um, name is the at symbol WS, I'm looking at my notes, W-S-T-Y-R-S-K-Y. 
Uh, and her name is Wanda. So Wanda, congratulations. You are the winner of this amazing book. Please send me an email. My email address is earthtonesgirl at gmail.com. There is a link to it. Um, well, not a link, but it's also in the show notes under this video if I said it too fast. But please send me an email with all of your contact information and I will get your book in the mail ASAP and just in time for the Falling Leaves sock. Cal. Um, so thank you to everyone who left comments. There were over 340 comments. It was, it sounds so corny, but I really hope that you can see my sincerity and hear my sincerity. I truly wish with some of these comments, um, with, with all of them actually, that I could just give everybody a copy. I really, it's so hard to pick just one. Um, it really, really, really is hard. I know that's just not possible. It's not feasible on a lot of levels to give everybody a copy, but I really and truly wish that I could. So Wanda, I really hope you enjoy the book and you get a lot of use out of it. Uh, if you are on Instagram and you knit socks from the book, I would love to see them. Uh, and thank you so much to everybody who left comments and um, joined the, the giveaway. So thank you. Uh, so that takes care of that. And again, I, I wanted to get this video done. I was determined because I did want the winner to receive it before the start of the Falling Leaf Sock Cow. I left all of the details in my last episode in the show notes. Uh, there is also a post on Instagram if you follow me there. I've pinned it. That's also a new feature on Instagram. I've pinned it. So when you look at my profile, I'll see if I can put a picture of it in here for you. When you look at my profile page, you'll see that it's the first post on the top left. It will be the first post. I'm not sure if that's going to reverse when I put the picture up here, but anyway, you'll understand. You'll see it. Um, so that's going to stay there and any other posts that I post will come after that, but that's going to stay there. It'll be a lot easier for people to find the details, to get their questions answered. Um, if they leave a comment on that, I will be checking that frequently to answer questions. Usually most of the answers to your questions are all are already in the post, but just in case I will keep it there, it will be pinned there for the duration of the Cal so that I can see any questions. Um, so yeah, the excitement is brewing. The Cal is in 11 days. Oh my gosh. I will do, I've never done YouTube live. I've never done a live stream before. I'm going to talk to a friend of mine who does them all the time. Um, her name is Joanna. She is the host of the Stitching the High Notes podcast. And she does live videos often. Actually, she streams them and does premieres, but what I'd love to do is actually record live and then that will stay on. So completely unscripted, not that this is so scripted, but I do follow notes. Um, so I'd love to possibly do a launch on YouTube. I think that would be really fun. I might just do two, one on Instagram and one here. So um, as soon as I figure that out, fingers, toes, arms, legs crossed that I can, I'm sure it's a lot easier than, than it looks. Um, that will probably be happening. So I'm really excited. There's so much excitement about it. There are so many fall cows going on. So again, um, go and have a look and see what else is happening out there. They're all sort of similar with fall themes. Um, but yeah, I think it's gonna be really, really fun and I'm so, so excited. And I actually, over the summer, I've been casting on socks like crazy, but um, I'm trying to go back to my new month, new cast on tradition. And for, uh, I cast on a sock on September 1st and I'm almost finished the first one. So I will show you that in just a minute. And that sock has prompted a, uh, what, what, how do I say it? It's prompted a, an excitement in me to record a new tutorial. So I'll talk about that in just a bit. Um, yeah, but in the meantime, um, so I talked about the winner and I also just wanted to share some sock, a sock that I just finished knitting. I know I have other ones to share with you from the summer, but I just finished these and they're so different for me. And I, I'm really excited to share this with you. So let me grab them and um, we'll chat. So if you've been following along for a while, I have shared in the past, really past, past episodes that my fiber journey started with crocheting and I learned to crochet when I was eight years old. A 
classmate of mine taught me how to crochet um, during recess. We would sit in the playground uh, during recess at school and she taught me how to crochet <laughs> back in the days before there were phones and craziness in the world and kids were just kids and we sat there and talked to each other <laughs> and uh it, it was it was it opened I don't know something clicked in my head and I'll never forget sitting there her name was Frances we called her Mitchie it was Frances Michelle and um Mitchie and I would sit there and crochet like crazy there was this little stone wall in the play in the playground and we would sit on it there together with our red heart yarn and our Susan Bates hooks and I was obsessed. I, I remember I would go to her house after school some days, like on the weekend or on Fridays, and ask a million questions. And when I had tapped her completely dry, <laughs> I remember buying the book um, Crochet Crochet for Beginners. I think it's Crochet for Beginners. I'll, I'll write it down here on the screen um, by Maggie Rigetti. Does anybody have that book? It was a yellow book with like a bluish background. Um, crochet for Beginners, Crochet for... Anyway wore this book out, underlining, highlighting. I crocheted and crocheted and crocheted all through high school. I, I didn't actually get to knitting until I went to massage school when I was in my late 20s, but that's a whole other conversation. The point is, um, I always thought of crochet more for things as opposed to garments. And by things, I mean blankets and more doilies and, and bedspreads, things like that, because a lot of people in the Caribbean, which is, I'm from Barbados, they crochet, um, but not garments because the weather is just not conducive. It's just too hot. Even for a cotton crocheted something, unless it's a light shawl that you might wear, and shawls also, although that's a garment, but more for shawls, something super, super light and airy because it's just too hot. So I didn't ever associate crochet with clothing and garments of any kind. However, fast forward to now, and at the beginning of the summer, I forget when the cow started, maybe June, end of May, beginning of June, Jen Yard, who is Everything Shapes Us on Instagram, she put out a new sock pattern called Grannies in a Row, the Grannies in a Row socks. And as soon as she posted them, I fell madly in love with them and said, oh my gosh, I have to knit a pair. If you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen them, but they are... It's a sock with a round of mini granny squares and they are the cutest socks ever. And it was so much fun making them. So here they are. <laughs> you pull back so you can see them. Oh my gosh. Just let's just, I'll pause so you can take it all in. I'll just pause for a second. Aren't those amazing? Oh my gosh, I, these little granny squares could not be any, I'm going to put one down so I can just kind of focus. They could not be any cuter. That's the front, that's the back. And I fell so in love with these. The, a little bit of work, I'm not going to lie, a little bit of work went into these because you knit six, you crochet, oh my God, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I forgive that faux pas. You crochet six granny squares, which you then sew together. Then you pick stitches up from the top edge. So you, you've created a tube. You pick stitches up from the top edge and knit up. And then you pick stitches up from the bottom edge and knit down. Oh my gosh. And I always tend to avoid toe up socks for a lot of reasons, but the main reason is because I can never get the cast off the bind off edge to look the way I want it to and to closely resemble a top down cast on so I finally found one I thought I found one and I had one for years it was the extra extra stretchy no flare bind off I'll link to that down below but was since because of this pattern I was introduced to and actually also be from Stephen West's sock cal over the summer I was introduced to Judy's extra stretchy bind off I think I'm saying it right and it is oh my gosh by far hands down aesthetically absolutely gorgeous and functionally the best cast the best bind off ever so anytime anybody's now going to ask what do you recommend 
this is the one that I recommend. I do Jody Judy's magic cast on for toe up socks on the rare occasion and this will now be my go-to bind off because it's just amazing but so anyway back to the sock these little granny squares were an absolute delight to knit these this whole pattern was wonderful the original pattern so i modified things a little bit i'm i'm one of those my sock knitting is like cooking i never follow the recipe exactly i always have to tweak something and jen was very encouraging of that so I did my, basically the alacrity socks from the granny squares down. That's basically what I did. So it's the Dutch, it's the garter stitch heel flap and Dutch heel or square heel turn. And then I did the garter stitch toe. Can you see that? Let me hold that up. And then I did the garter stitch toe. In the contrasting color, it matches this background color that I bordered the granny squares with and the brown so and all of this yarn let me just say that all of the yarn in this in this pair of socks is by legacy fiber art so the minis are a mini set called the earth tones mini set the lightish color lightish brown color in here that first contrasting is kappa and the brown color is called dry roast Yes, a bit of a coffee theme. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, they're all, all of these yarns are by Legacy Fiber Arts. And oh my gosh, I just, I could not love them anymore. They are so comfy. They're so cute. And I also decided not to block mine. I don't usually block my socks anyway. When I wear them, to me, that's blocking. Um, so when you put these on, the granny squares puff just a little bit, which I absolutely love. It just kind of reminds me of blankets. It just feels really squishy around your ankle. And yeah, so that's my, because someone asked me, why do yours look puffy? And I basically said, because I didn't block them. So there you go. So yep, here are my socks. Just finished these. The cowl ended on August 31st. So I finished these on the evening, I think of the 29th, but saved them because I thought it would be the perfect post to end August and to start September. So yeah, I, I sometimes I plan my posts. I'm admitting it. Judgment free zone. <laughs> um, so yeah, so here they are. Love them, love them, love them. So give this pattern a try. You can make them a little bit shorter. Um, and if you are on Instagram, you can go on and see if you follow the hashtag, it's granny square, grannies in a row socks. If you follow that hashtag, the variations on the colors are just so amazing. They're all, the whole point is for them to be scrappy. Uh, and of course, earth tones girl, earth tone socks. <laughs> uh, I couldn't, I couldn't help myself. I had to go, so I knew these were all in my stash and I just had to have them in these colors. And yeah, I just, I love them so, so much. So. The other thing I want to talk about with these, it's on, hold on, it's as you're coming down. So this would be, okay. So on this side, I'm going to hold it this way. Another thing that I learned over the summer is a new way to do, let me stop rubbing my finger on it. Can you see? I'm looking at the decreased stitches in the gusset right here. I learned a new way to do the, an, a left-leaning decrease. So it looks very much like a one-by-one -one cable, a one-by-one left-leaning cable. It looks very, very similar. And I learned from a video tutorial by Patty Lyons. So I'm going to share that in more detail, but it is definitely, am I still on the right side? Yes, I'm on the right side. It is the most perfect left-leaning decrease and most closely resembles a right leaning. It is just absolute. I mean, you really cannot see the difference. Usually with a with a left leaning decrease, you can see the decrease and then there's a slightly smaller stitch and then another round is the decrease and a smaller stitch. The stitches in between just don't look even with the decrease. With this one, with this decrease, it looks perfectly even. Okay, now I can hear you. I know what you're saying. Is that really important? No. Is anyone gonna know you did that? No. Is anyone going to stop and examine your socks that closely? Probably not. And if they do, then I would be really worried about other things and not the sock. Uh, <laughs> but will anybody ever know the type of decrease that you used? Probably not, unless they are looking for it. 
and you let someone get that close to you. But is working a decrease like that just taking your knitting or your making just to another level? To me, yes. And it's the minutia of knitting and those fine little details that get me excited, as you can see right now. <laughs> it just makes me so excited. I'm always looking for new ways to tweak things and make things look cleaner, more perfect, more... And not that perfect is what you're aiming for. Let's not use that word. Language is important. Let's not use that word. Um, makes it look maybe more refined, takes your making to another level, takes your garment to another level, uh, makes it look cleaner. Um, it's also just something fun to learn. That's the most important thing. It's just another thing to learn. And that's what lights me up. That's what makes me so excited. And I think it's what brings people to my channel because they see me getting excited over left-leaning decreases. Yeah, I'm a geek. I don't care. <laughs> my my geek flag is flying. <laughs> but th that's what that's what lights me up and makes me really happy. So I will share all of that down below for you. And I may do um thinking about doing a tutorial. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe I will. I'd like to. Yeah, we'll see. Anyway, it's a thought in the back of my mind. Um so yeah, those are my grannies in a row socks. Uh, and I want to show you one other pair. So let me grab those for, oh, I'm going to grab two things and I'll, I'll be right back to show you. So my, I'm not the only maker in our family. My husband is a really amazing beginner woodworker and, uh, he's really, really good. He has a table saw and a whole bunch of other tools downstairs in our, in his workshop. And, um, I'm actually a little jealous because he has a workshop and I just have a space. But we won't talk about that right now. <laughs> it's a husband-wife battle thing. Um, but when I told him, he saw that I was making these um, these socks. And I said to him that I had to find a way to... Um, I'm actually noticing a little thread poking out. I got to push that back in. Anyway, um, I told him that I was making these and I had to figure out a way to block them. Um, so he says well, what do you need? And I said, well, I just need a way to block them to a one inch square, like a proper one inch square. And he goes, hold on a second. So he goes downstairs to his workshop and he creates this for me. Let's put it that way. Can you see that? He creates this and it is a little piece of wood, a scrap piece of wood he had in his workshop. And he measured off one inch marks pop some nails in and I was able to put the granny squares, each corner of a granny, of the granny squares fit on each nail. And as I made them, I crocheted them. I keep saying knit, I'm so sorry. As I crocheted them, I popped them on here and just very lightly, just a, a mist of water from a spray bottle and I just let them sit. Oh my gosh. Nothing, the nails did not rust, the wood did not warp, the, blocks came out perfect one inch square and sewed together as you can see sewed together perfectly honey thank you he's never going to watch this but I just want to publicly thank him because <laughs> it's this this was so cute and I do I have since I have now acquired blocking mats and pins and I could do that but to have like one little tool just for that purpose was so special and I can increase the size and he's willing to make me more for granny squares because now I really want to just crochet granny squares, uh, maybe for a blanket or something, or maybe one big giant granny square. I made a blanket like that years ago, right after my friend taught me, I would go to Red Heart, I would go to Woolworth. I'm dating myself for the Americans watching. Do you remember Woolworth? I would go there after school because the bus dropped me off right in front. I would run in, you went downstairs to the craft department, and I knew nothing about dye lots, none of that. It was just this one color, all in shades of browns and rust. So this has been in me since I was eight, <laughs> my love of earth tones. And I would go down there and buy one skein at a time. And I would come home and crochet until I, the whole skein ball hank was gone. 
And then I would go down a couple days later to Woolworth and buy another one. Never check dye lots. So, but once it was put together, it really didn't matter. And I love it and I still have it. So anyway, one day I'll, I'll bring that out and show you. So those are my grannies in a row socks. And I have one more sock to show you for today. Yeah, so hold on. So my September cast on is this beautiful, yummy, delicious, yarny goodness. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Does it get any more fall perfection? I mean, I think if you looked up fall themed yarn in the dictionary, this would probably pop up. <laughs> it is so perfect. This is Harvest. Of course it is. This is, the name of this colorway is Harvest and it is by Tiny Human Knits, which is all the yarn up there and all the yarn in my bouquet over there. And Harvest is the colorway um, and I love it madly. I Like I said, I cast this on on, when was the first? Last Friday and I'm almost ready to put in the toe. I'm almost there. I've got maybe another 10, 20 rounds and I will put the toe in and cast on the other one. And I buy her yarn. Her yarn comes in 50 gram skeins or 100 gram skeins. I like the 50s. Um, I don't know, it's just easier to manage. And whatever I have left over, I tend to make gloves or an additional pair of socks. So I always buy two 50s. So um, it works out perfectly. It's just my own personal choice. You can buy it any way you want. And this colorway just screamed afterthought heel. I didn't have any, I didn't feel like digging through the stash or winding anything else. And I really love the bullseye effect of an afterthought heel. So that's what I did. And I haven't knit one in ages, in an absolute age. I mean, it's been, my gosh, more than a year. I wouldn't say two, but way more than a year since I have done a, an afterthought heel and I just, I had to do it. And there it is. Look at that. Bullseye. Perfect, perfect bullseye. No holes. Can you, is that on the camera? Yes. No holes. That's one side. There's the other side. The fit is absolutely perfect. Got a tiny, tiny little, let me open this back out. That is just where the yarn ended. Sorry, a little bumping the camera. That is where the yarn ended with just that little peak of the next color. And oh my gosh, I couldn't love these anymore. Look at that. Let me pop it on a blocker to show you. Um, absolutely love it. <laughs> so here we go. Yeah, yeah, you can see that a lot better on the blocker. Here, let me put the, get the needles out of the way. But the, oops, did I put it on upside down? Yes, yes I did. Sorry about that, hang on. Hold please, as my friend would say. <laughs> Ellen, are you watching? Uh, here you go. Oh yeah, much better. Here you go, there it is. Oh my goodness, just, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Now, let's talk about this, let's talk about an afterthought heel. <sighs> Every time I talk about an afterthought heel, I inevitably get somebody that comes into the comments and says, it's not an afterthought heel, it's a forethought heel because you knew exactly where you were going to put it. A true afterthought heel means you've completed the entire sock and then you go back and decide where you're going to put it in or cut it in. Yes, anybody that says that is correct, but it is also AKA known as an afterthought heel and that is what I have done so yes I did plan where I was going to put it and I wanted it in the yellow stripe and I started to, to do this the striping I started to do the heel with the yellow colorway so that it would blend and yeah there it is so this tutorial I have a tutorial for an afterthought heel on my YouTube channel um, it was filmed and recorded before I learned a lot of new things. So I'm really tempted. I think it's going to happen, actually. I think I'm going to just do an updated version, an updated um, tutorial for an afterthought heel. This particular method is by Kirby Warby, and she learned it from Kat Bordy. And I am a very devout 
without the religious side of it, but I am a very devout fan of Kat Bordy. She passed away a couple of years ago, um, but I had taken classes with her. I have all of her books and she was honestly a genius when it came to knitting in general, just absolute genius. So um, I'm thinking about doing a tutorial for this. And I also, when I do it, so I have modified it a little bit from Kirby Werbys. I cut in, I don't use an afterthought, I don't use waste yarn, so I actually mark where I'm going to cut in. I will cut the yarn, unpick the row, I pick up all my stitches, but instead of jumping right into the decreases, I will do two rounds, two plain rounds, and then start the decreases. And what that does is it gives you a little bit more room across the instep. For anyone with a high arch, it, even if you don't have an high arch, it just stops any pulling across here. And it also um, deepens the heel a little bit. So if you need it even deeper, if that's not deep enough, if this isn't deep enough for you, am I on the right spot? Yeah, if that's not deep enough for you, you can just knit a couple more rounds. I've done as deep as five rounds before starting the decreases. With this, I only did two. Um, but yeah, I just wanna show that. And I also weave in, so the two ends that you end up unraveling, I used to weave those in with a tapestry needle after, and now I knit them in as I do the heel. So it's just, again, cleaner, I love the result. I never get a hole. Um, so I just want to show you how to do that. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I'm going to probably, I'm going to try to see if I can get that done soon. So here's a little behind the scenes, everybody. I, I don't know if this is a TMI, if I should overshare this or not, but um, you know what? Yeah, why not? I, one of the things I, my hands, I have eczema on my hands. So sometimes if I have a, an out, like my hands are broken out, I have to wait until they heal because it really just doesn't look nice looking at that through the camera. <laughs> so once my hands heal, um, just showing that not everything is perfect here all the time. So um, yeah, there are things I don't like and things that just don't look pretty. So once my hands are looking a lot better, <laughs> then I will record the tutorial. And, I, and hopefully by the time I finish this sock, um, I'm going to cast on the next one and hopefully by then my hands will look a lot nicer because the next sock will be in the perfect spot. Like I'll have a sock ready. Ooh, sorry. Why do I keep doing that? I will have a sock ready and at that point. So recording a tutorial would be perfect timing. So fingers crossed, no pun intended, that my hands heal in time. So yeah, that is, oh, I also wanted to show you because I made this for myself. Hang on. You know what? I'm going to take it off because then you can see it a little better. Oh my goodness. The phone, my phone never rings. What on earth? Oh, oh, someone stopped it. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you to whoever just grabbed that. So I just wanted to show you that I made myself, I'm not putting these in the shop. I just don't think um, there'll be enough demand for them, to be honest. But if there is, then maybe I'll do it for next year. But I made myself a little progress keeper can you see that I hope it's showable I'll, I'll put it on um I'll put a picture in in case you can't see it here but it says September baby <laughs> so I made that for myself and I sent one to a very dear friend uh because we are both September babies and our birthdays are within days of each other so that is keeping me company as I knit my September sock ah <sighs> so that is I think it for this episode. I did want to share. So we did the winner. We did sock whips. Um, talked about Instagram for a little bit. And I also wanted to talk about um, podcasts that I'm watching right now. Um, and in the next episode or an upcoming episode, I'm going to talk about books that I'm listening to, but we'll get to that. But I've returned to watching knitting podcast. I had stopped for a while, not for any reason other than lack of time. And I, I've been watching um, Flannel and Pearls. It's by a male knitter named Christopher. So if you would like to go and check that out, he's amazing. And my friend Joanna, hi, if you're watching, honey, she has now gone full time with Stitching the High Notes. That is her, the name of her YouTube channel and the name of her business. She creates the most amazing project bags. 
I've used them. I will put a picture of them in here for you. And she is such an incredibly talented maker, sewer, knitter, podcaster, content creator, and her business is now full time. So, um, go and have a look. Let's, let's support another maker out there. And not just because she's a friend of mine, I, her work is just so outstanding and she deserves recognition and, and deserves to be supported. And I really want to do that for her and for many others that are out there. Um, so that's something else I'd like to do a little bit more here on the channel. So yeah, go and check out Joanna. Congratulations, my dear friend. I am cheering you on as always. And congratulations to Christopher on his new channel. Um, if you are starting a YouTube channel and you're worried and you, you want to start a YouTube channel and you're not quite sure where to begin, just begin. Just get your camera, record on your phone. You don't need fancy equipment. Just just do it. And I follow um, Think Media. That's where I've, I watch a lot of their content creating tutorials. And they have their intro basically says you got to just hit record, you got to just press record. And it really is true. So do more of what makes you happy. Knitting, crocheting, making video content, whatever it is, do more of what makes you happy. Uh, let's celebrate that this fall season. Um, yeah, and let's let's just make together. Let's knit together. So thank you, everybody, for joining me. Congratulations, Wanda. Uh, again, just send me your contact information, and um, I will get this book out to you really, really soon. And uh, I will be back really soon because I just want to sit here and cry and tell you all about the first day of school <laughs> because I'm such a big sad. <laughs> Have a great week, everybody. I will see you again. Bye. Mwah. Thanks for being here.